All right, so um, we're back in Arc Pro, and we have our data stacked and symbolized the way that we want. So now what we want to do is look at uh, changing the display settings and trying to enhance contrast. So first off, this image actually looks pretty good. Um, I don't think that we need to do a lot of work with it in terms of like improving the visualization, but um, I did want to show you some settings. Okay, so let's zoom in to an area here and just so we can see some detail. And let's play around with some of these settings. So again, I'm clicked on that band stack and I'm in the appearance tab. And again, there's some options here. So we looked at the band combos. I'm just going to switch back to um, true color for now. Okay, and we have some other options. So first off, in this area, we have different kind of like global enhancements. So we can change the brightness, the overall brightness of the image. We can change the contrast, and we can change the gamma, which has to do with um, kind of differentiating kind of the mid-level grays. So if we adjust this, you know, we basically make the image brighter or darker. I tend to leave these settings where they are for the most part. Um, this is our contrast. So we can make it more contrasted, less contrasted. So let's just set that back at 10. And then lastly, we can change the gamma, which is kind of like your mid levels. I think it was a 2.2, let's leave that alone. Okay, so as I said before, I generally don't find that I need to change these much. I think that the defaults generally are fine, but you can fiddle around with those just to try to enhance if you're trying to look for a certain feature or, or something. All right, um, what has a really big impact on the display is the stretch method applied. So as you can see, the default here is a percent clip. So let's just flip through some of these other enhancements just to see what they look like. Um, real quick, I'm just going to remove this and add it back in. That way, just in case I screwed up some of the display settings, um, it's not. it'll go back to normal. Okay, there we go. And... So it's just the two color there. Okay, cool. So that's back to where it was initially, which I think it was the same, so it really didn't matter. All right, so let's look at some stretches. So um, first off, we'll just switch it to none. So this is an applying no contrast stretching at all. So the input brightness or DN values are being mapped out to the same brightness values on the monitor. And actually, it looks really dark. So if we, if you want to know why that is, if we go into properties, and then display, no, oh, actually, I'm wrong. You go into symbology, and then if we want to look at the histogram, we can see that most of the values are in the low range, radiometric range. So it's not highlighting a lot of high values, it's a lot of low values. So that means that we're not getting, we're not really using the full brightness range. So not doing any stretching generally doesn't work very well. Okay, so let's look at another option. So let's do minimum, maximum. Okay. I don't know if it'll update the mapping. Let's go back. We'll just uh, go out of here for now. Okay, so this is minimum maximum, as you can see. And again, this is still pretty dark. And if we go back and look at our symbology there, you can kind of see why that is. Again, it's making the highest value, the highest input value the max and the lowest input value, the min, and just kind of stretching it linearly. So again, since we don't have a lot of high values, it kind of makes like a weird display. So that's not working very well in this case either. The default in ARC is percent clip. Um, so let's pull that open. 
or, or apply that, I mean. So that's kind of the default. That generally looks pretty good. So what that does is it takes a certain upper percentage of the values and completely saturates them or makes them like uh, full screen brightness. And, a, and then the lower percentage, it may, a certain lower percentage, it makes the lowest brightness or black. And then it literally stretches everything in between. Um, I generally find this is a good default, but you may want to experiment with some other options. And then we have standard deviation. So it tries to display based on a standard normal distribution, which in here looks kind of weird. Um, so kind of the brightness values depend on their difference or variance or, di or you know, difference relative to the mean. And then we have histogram equalization, which basically takes the areas that are more dominant and kind of spreads out their brightness values and takes the less dominant brightness ranges and kind of squishes them down. So you're trying to highlight differences. Um, that can be useful for really highlighting differences, as I mentioned, but it kind of makes for an odd display for this specific image. And then we have a couple other options. You can apply custom. You can um, also use Esri has their own method that they use, which I find generally works pretty well. If you want to be more specific, then you can go into um, the symbology and you can change the method to, I'm just going to change it to percent clip. And you can see the default here is 2% on each end. Um, you could change that if you wanted. So for example, let's just change it to 1%. Changes it a bit. Let's do like a more extreme clip. So we'll do 5% and 5%. So that's kind of highlighting the, there's going to be a lot of saturation now there in the like bright developed areas. Um, so anyway, those are some options just for doing some uh, display changes. Let's switch this back to a 2% because that looked pretty good. And let's um, look at a, one other option. So another option is DAR, which stands for Dynamic Range Adjustment. So with DAR, what this allows you to do is adjust the brightness levels, not for the entire image, but just for like the current display extent. This is probably a little extreme. Let's just do none. Uh, minimum, let's do none. And yeah, current display. We'll bump this down to like a one for now. This is really highlighting differences in this case. I'm zoomed in kind of far. Um, so what this is doing, when you use DAR, or dynamic range adjustment, it's only calculating over what you can currently see. So it's trying to make it such that you're using the full dynamic range or the full brightness ranges, not, for the, not across the entire image, but just uh, um, for the current view extent. And as you can see, it kind of will change as you move around. So that's dynamic range adjustment, which can be very useful if you've got a lot of differences. So you have like land and water in the same or same scene. That can kind of create a weird distribution. Yep. So anyway, that's that's DAR and turn it off. It stops doing that and you go back to just using the entire image. Okay, so that was a quick overview of just some um, contrast enhancements, which can be useful if you're trying to look for certain features, or maybe you're trying to do some digitizing or photo interpretation on top of the image.